son, when do you testify? Sometime today. I still think it stinks. What good is doctor-patient confidentiality if some clever lawyer can get around this easy? No. Who do you think's more devious, the lawyer or the client? How does she sleep at night doing what she's doing? Oh, I got a really good night's sleep last night. Good, you're gonna need it. It's gonna be an important session. Nikki, I'm putting you on the stand today. Great, I'm ready. The question is, are they? Look at her. She's almost gloating. We've got a long way to go. I'd rather give her the moment and take the victory. Ah, uh, can we take it? All rise. This court is now in session. Now we have Judge Parker presiding. Be seated. Miss Holmes, you have a witness to call. The plaintiff calls Dr. Tom Hardy to the stand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Please be seated. Dr. Hardy, would you tell the court what positions you hold at General Hospital? Uh, I'm head of the emergency and trauma unit. And? And I'm also a staff psychiatrist. And in that capacity, doctor, did you counsel Monica Cornermain at her request after the David Langton surgery? Yes, I did. Did Dr. Cornermain seek your professional psychiatric counseling after the David Langton surgery? I'm sorry, Ms. Holmes, but I consider that an area of doctor-patient confidentiality. Your Honor, I've listed Dr. Hardy as a hostile witness to the plaintiff. I ask that he be ordered to answer the question. Dr. Hardy, this court has already ruled on the matter of the admissibility of certain portions of your patient records regarding Dr. Quartermain. Uh, you must respond to questions within that framework. Tom's right. He shouldn't be made to do this. Do you need me to, re to repeat the question, Dr. Hardy? No. Yes, uh, she did seek my professional services. After the David Langton surgery? After the surgery, yes. Doctor, I'd like you to take a look at this photostat copy. Do you recognize it? Oh, it's my handwriting. It's, uh, it's notes off my first session with Dr. Quartermain. Would you describe that encounter for us, please? I remind you, you're still under oath. She came into my office. I was sitting at my desk. She wanted to talk to me. Do you remember her exact words? Yes. Well, would you relate them to this court, please, doctor? She said that... I've been sort of walking around with something for a while. It's begun to really bother me. Well, sit down and we'll talk about it. I'm, uh... I've been worried that a mistake that I made in the surgery with David Langton may have, um, resulted in his brain damage. What would make you think that? Well, I would performed the bypass surgery. He was off the heart-lung machine. I was... Cutting the sutures to remove the cannula, and I cut the aorta. It, uh, it took a while to stop the bleeding, and there was a time when there was no blood to the brain. Every doctor makes mistakes from time to time. Well, I can understand your concern, but why do you think it would be your fault? Because I was, um, I was momentarily distracted. Did she tell you what caused that distraction, Dr. Hardy? She said that it was due to the stress of the operation. Maybe she lost focus. <laughs> lost focus? Dr. Monica Quartermain, eminent heart surgeon, lost focus during a delicate and life-threatening procedure? <laughs> Does that sound professional to you, Dr. Hardy? Objection. That calls for a conclusion on the part of witness. Objection sustained. Thank you, Dr. Hardy. I have no further questions. Well, now we understand why she's glowing. I'm an only child. How would you describe your relationship with your parents? Very close. Would you call it a loving relationship? Yes, very much so. The day your father died, was he your only living parent? Yes. Uh, my mother died just a few months earlier. Did you get to spend much time with your father before he died? Yes, as, as much as the um, hospital would allow me to. Did you see him the day he died? 
Yes. Nikki, I know this is going to be painful for you. Okay, but right now we're looking for the truth. The day your father died, is there a moment you remember the most? An incident that you just can't seem to forget? I... I guess the one thing that stands out the most is, um... When I walked in, just after uh, Dr. Quartermain had left. Why that moment? Be because uh, he seemed so, uh, I don't know, agitated. long after that that he he uh that's okay Nikki that's okay we all know what happened to your father your witness Mr. Stockton I have no questions at this time your honor but I do reserve the right to recall the witness later understood Mr. Stockton we'll take a lunch break and reconvene this afternoon at which time Miss Holmes you will call your next witness and that will be Monica Quartermain Mr. Why didn't you cross-examine Nikki? What, and let her grab even more of the sympathy vote than she's already got? She seems to know how to play the court order. Yeah, you're exactly right, Dr. Hardy. She knows how to play the game, but so do I. Nikki's uh, cross-examination will keep for another day. No. Come on, Tom. Don't be so hard on yourself. You had to testify. I'll tell you one thing just made me think twice about the way I keep my patient records. There's nothing wrong with how you keep your records. This is an unusual situation. Poor Monica, her whole life being paraded out in public. No, it's not over yet, Mom. <sighs> Look how she sits in court. She's so damn smug. Now, I might too if things were going our way. Oh. Now, you guys, don't be so gloomy. You know what they say. It's not over till the fat lady sings. Anything new about Tracy and the baby? I spoke to her this morning, status quo, so I guess that's good news. Well, I heard from Simone that Dylan was doing very well. Well, it's nice to know that some good is happening to the court remains. Listen, Monica, I'd like to stay this afternoon, but I have some business to attend. Oh, don't be silly. No, you, you go ahead. Uh, thank you for coming now. Are you going to spring your surprise on him today? Absolutely. 